Uh, Dr. Shree, good morning and great to have you with us. I have to start with uh, your reaction to what's been going on uh, with regards to this whole coronavirus thing. You've been pretty outspoken and also vocal in how the government has been handling or rather mishandling this crisis. 900 people infected, two dead. What do you think the government should be doing right now? Disconcerting, of course. I mean, we worry because... Uh the impact is pervasive. It's not a question of only death or sickness, but it's affecting the entire population. I think what we need is a very concerted, clear direction. We need a leadership that has a clear policies, firm, resolute. They don't talk, we don't need to talk about security measures. We need to impress upon the public that this is a very serious, incredibly worrying situation that we need economic, social, medical programs, and this must be laid down to the people very clearly. I understand it's a new government. It's a fragile government. Notwithstanding, we are with the government in all efforts to uh, deal with this issue. But, but Dr. Shri, what do you think the government uh, of uh, Muhyiddin Yassin, the new government of Muhyiddin Yassin, should be doing more of? Uh, Tun Mahathir Mohammed. Uh, just a short while ago, came out with a stimulus package, 20 billion ringgit worth. That is not enough in your mind? That was prior to the crisis. This is already uh, considered to be quite irrelevant. We have a situation that demands a more concerted effort. The economic team must look at the requirements. Um, uh, we need to pump in a lot of funds um, because you cannot just close um, shops and... Um, eating outlets, and then say, stay at home. Fair. What do they eat? We are talking about people struggling to survive. So these issues must be resolved. We are talking also about medical facilities. Do we have the capacity? This is not going to end next week. It is going to, be, it is going to escalate. Mm. We must learn from the experience of China or Singapore, or countries that have quite effectively dealt with the situation. We, we must anticipate that this problem would escalate. And we are not prepared. The hospitals, the clinics, the medical team, all this must be dealt with. And that's why I think the government must not only talk about staying at home. Yes, I fully in, um, um, support that. We must stay at home. I'm staying at home. But uh, we have to deal with the situation. <laughs> we must impress the, uh, the, the population, yeah. the people at large, the villagers, that they must really have some form of discipline. But at the same time, the government must take measures. And this is what I think is lacking in this country. We are not seeing a clear, coherent Specifically, plan, a concerted effort. Okay. Dr. Shri, specifically, what measures do you want the government to uh, take? What additional measures? Number one, we have to uh, have an inventory what is required in our hospitals. The tests, the uh, uh, medical team, the facilities. We must know exactly what is required and we must spend enough to make sure that we have the resources. Urban, suburban, rural and the rural heartland. Number two, the economic uh, measures. We can say that we have 600 ringgit or 300 ringgit, but what about the poorest section of our community? I know from my constituency, well, I have to go because they are struggling to live. It is not enough to say stop uh, operations, but it requires funds. And this is where the economic team must be able to spend, mm. allocate enough resources for that purpose. Number three, of course, some of the measure, security measures. Mm -hmm. I think what is being emphasized now is that if mm -hmm. the police are not able to handle, we have to the, have to have the army to come in. It's actually uh, absurd to me to, to uh, ask uh, the army to come in at that period when the police can handle. We should use all efforts possible to impress upon the public. We still have, for example, congregation in the mosque, for example, last week here in Indonesia. We should have just stopped that. There is no basis or rational to say, to so, suggest, we will have a fatwa committee to discuss. We need to exercise some authority to make sure that the health 
and the security of the country is paramount. We need effective, firm leadership. So Okay, Dr. Shri, so to be clear, one of the measures you think uh, in terms of uh, uh, social distancing that should be implemented in Malaysia, you think, is to stop people from going to mosques. Is that right? Yes. They should have been far from the beginning. Mosques or churches or temples. Um, this false sense of religiosity. I mean, uh, the, the, the survival, the security, the health of the community is paramount. You can always pray at home. Is an example. Of course, they have now announced, but it'll be two weeks after the event. It's two weeks late. Um, I think uh, th this is a clear example where the leadership is a bit hesitant. They, they want to portray themselves as probably a bit religious, mm. so they, they delay. And you know the uh, problem, uh, part of the problem stem from the congregation of uh, the, the tablet, the mosque uh, program, and, and, um, and now we have to deal mm. with it. But I think still it's not too late. We have to anticipate mm. more problems, but we have mm. to be more resolute, firm, and effective in our measures. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Shri, we, we have this virus, uh, a pandemic. We also have a, a financial market meltdown. Is this in your mind, and you lived through it uh, 12, 13 years ago, is this worse than the GFC, the global financial crisis, what we're going through now? Well, right now it is close to that. But I think I anticipate that with the, with the trends going and Malaysia, which anticipate more problems, I would uh, certainly uh, uh, suggest that the government take uh, measures now because it's, going to be, uh, it's not going to be better, but it's going to get worse in the next few days and weeks. And for that matter, look at the ringgit, mm look at the share market, but uh, look at the massive uh, layouts and unemployment and, and the closure of all these uh, small eating outlets. You know, unlike more uh, successful industrial nations, the eating outlet is uh, massive uh, operations that keep uh, the poor uh, segment of the community survive, selling, you know, cakes and uh, uh, me and noodles, which uh, has to be stopped, and, and this will drag down. I'm not too mm. obsessed with just the market. I'm, I'm more concerned about the general livelihood of our people. And I think in dealing with the situation, we have to look yeah. at both, both the economic fundamentals and okay. the impact on the poorer segment of the community, which generally governments tend to neglect. Okay, fair enough. Uh, if we could get very quickly to, uh, to uh, Malaysian politics, uh, Dr. Shri, uh, I think the key question everybody wants to know right now uh, is whether PH, Pakatan Harapan, uh, your group, has the numbers, has the seats to form a government. Can you uh, be clear about the numbers, whether you have them or not? One, and also, second, what about a new confidence vote by, let's say, May. Is that a, a reality, a, a potentially? Martin, our priority now is, of course, the virus, the national security, and the survival of our people. Uh, but, of course, this we also consider that this government is a backdoor government, illegitimate and treacherous in many ways. And now they lack policies. Uh, they are now ha helpless. But we are in the condition, uh, position... Uh, not to uh, exploit on this and therefore to support any effective measures. But mind you, this is a proof uh, to the people of Malaysia that uh, a treacherous backdoor government would not survive. It is fragile. We have leaders, ministers, including Minister of Home Affairs, instead of looking at this issue of the virus and the security, trying to entice people calling up MPs from our party and persuading them, um, promising all sorts of perks, etc., to join them. You can see as a proof and evidence that they don't have the numbers. But still, I would say for now, for the next one or two weeks, my focus is the country, the virus, the economy, and the welfare of the common people. But I remain very optimistic because I know... What? The, about the numbers, what we need to do in the next few months. 
Okay, and do you think a no-confidence vote can be called by May in Parliament? We'll see the situation. I mean, the unfolding. I think uh, people are more concerned about uh, their welfare, their survival, uh, and the impact of the virus, and I don't think I would want to deal with that uh, situation of no-confidence vote. But what is apparent is that this government is not confident enough, is certainly fragile. And I think our role as the opposition is to assure them, do your job effectively now. Mm. Okay. Uh, Dr. Shree, Tun Mahathir Mohammed, uh, nobody is ruling him out uh, yet. He's come out just recently with uh, uh, statements, and this is not the first time he's said it, saying that the problem in his mind was that yourself, Dr. Uh, 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 Anwar, you were too impatient to take over as the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Is, is that true? Is that fair? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Mahave would continue to contradict himself and uh, make promises and rennish on them. So I don't think it is fair for me to say more. But what is important is everybody knows that I've waited for 21 years. I mean, an impatient man wouldn't have waited that much. Number two, I've given him that opportunity, the That's latitude true. to govern without interference. All right? Number three, he questioned my mm. role in trying to get the, all the races together. I'm a Malaysian. I'm a Malay Muslim. The majority, of course, Malays and Muslims. But my Chinese, Indians, Ibans, and uh, Daya friends are part of my family in Malaysia. And you don't tell me, after 62 years of independence, mm. that I don't need a multiracial party. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, multiracial politics versus racial politics, if we could. A lot of demographers uh, have come out and said that by the year 2040, uh, uh, the uh, ethnic Malays will constitute 74, 75 percent of Malaysia's population, which is going to make it very, very difficult to work with groups like uh, DAP, which, which is primarily Chinese, and it, and it lessens the appeal of multiracial politics, which, which is your thing. Uh, is that fair? And if that's the way to, uh, demographics is moving, how do, you, how do you fight that, push back against that? Notwithstanding demography, Martin, this is our country. We can be 90% Malays, but a 10% non-Malays, non-Muslims are members of our family. We will have to have the resolve, the strength, the courage to state that fact and to ensure that every single Malaysian must be given the right and accord the privilege. What needs to be assisted is affirmative action to help the poor irrespective of race. I know this is a contentious issue. I understand the frustrations, exasperation of many Malays because they have been quite neglected, not necessarily by the Chinese, but the corrupt Malay leaders who have squandered billions and come and tell us now that, you know, we need Malay leaders. We need good, incorruptible, mm -hmm. effective, courageous leaders. Okay, uh, fair enough. I, I have to ask you this. One of the worries or fears uh, with the new uh, 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 Muhyiddin uh, government uh, is that with UMNO back in play now, uh, people like former Prime Minister uh, Najib Raza could either get off lightly or get off completely. How much of a risk is there of that happening, do you think? There is, of course. This country must subscribe to the rule of law not uh, personal vendetta. I, our problem in the past, with the past uh, prime minister, is probably to, to be seen to be too personal against person some personalities. I don't share that view. I, am, uh, mm. I believe strongly in the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law. And I think if the present government, uh, led by Muhyiddin, fail in this resolve, I don't think he will ever be forgiven and will be condemned in history. Okay, uh, Dr. Tree, very quickly, uh, just a few minutes left. Uh, one key question I've always wondered myself over these years 
is whether or not you actually believed to Mahathir Muhammad's promise to hand over power to you to allow you to become prime minister uh, eventually. Do, do you still believe him? Well, not now, but then uh, I thought when he came, um, he was he seemed to be quite sincere, came to see me when I was in prison uh, in the courthouse and appealed for my support and says, look, Anwar, we have to work together and make promises in private, in public, sign documents and what else? I mean, I'm just human. And I take people at face value, and I think people do change with age, with wisdom. But I am not necessarily right always. And in this particular case, I apologize. I was wrong. No regrets. Okay. And finally, okay, finally, Dr. Oshri, I mean, this whole political ordeal that you've gone through, which has dragged on for decades, has seen you in jail, sodomy charges, you've been toppled from the very heights of power, you were number two, about to ascend uh, to be the prime minister, and then all this happened. Uh, I've always wondered all these years, there must be so much anger, bitterness, resentment, potentially even jealousy. How have you dealt with all of this as a person? Faith, good wife and family, and... uh... You believe in uh, it is a conviction. You believe in it. I mean, if you uh, in, um, have so much uh, enmity and hatred, you will not be able to survive. So I think we, in case Sarah, Sarah, we have to move on. And the plight of the people okay. surpass my personal predicament. Okay, and. Uh, y- what, what if, Dr. Tri, in your lifetime, and you are 72 now, what if in your lifetime you do not become prime minister? At what stage do you literally give up? Uh, and would you retire or, or, or would you stay engaged and involved in Malaysian politics in some way, shape or form? Well, of course, I, um, I'm mindful of the fact the limitations and it is up to the you know parties and the Malaysian generally to decide but I'm quite settled I can go and give some lectures and uh, probably be on air with NCNBC from time to time but I think uh, I am quite settled I'm a happy man 